The Lakers drafted D'Angelo Russell to be their long-term solution at point guard, but within two years, Magic Johnson was ripping him on the way out. D'Angelo Russell's an excellent player. We want to thank him for what he did for us, but what I needed was a leader. I needed somebody also that can make the other players better and also that players want to play with. Ouch! A normal 20-year-old would be crushed if an all-time player said that, but D'Lo overcame it. He became an all-star and earned a max contract, but now he's back on the Lakers. And if he fails again, there's no coming back this time. D'Lo returned as part of the Russell Westbrook trade. He was up and down in the playoffs, so when Darvin Ham benched him before the trade deadline, it looked like he was out again. LA even tried to move him for DeJounte Murray, but the Hawks said no, he is a toxic asset. But D'Lo proved all his haters wrong. After the Lakers fell below 500, D'Lo became a starter again and responded with 39 points and eight assists against Utah. Dipped to 14 in a win over OKC, but ran off seven games, averaging 27 points and six dimes. Since returning from the bench, Russell has 22 points a night on a career best 45% from deep. LA is 17 and 10 in that time, just four and eight without him starting. D'Lo is the third best Laker. Maybe the best number three LeBron and AD have ever had in LA. But his career is kinda like the newest crypto coin. Looks great today, could collapse overnight. Why? Because the playoffs are almost here. And so far, D'Lo is a completely different player in big games. It's the big mystery of his career. How could a guy this good suddenly collapse? Hey, these games are real fun right now with all these teams trying to fight for seeding. Even more fun though, with a little underdog. My favorite game is called Pick 'em You Pick Higher or Lower. For your favorite player, whatever game you're gonna watch that night, you can up to 20X your money on a single night. I'm just gonna go for a little 3X, a little more conservative. Here are my two picks. First up is Cade Cunningham. His points are at 22 and a half. We're gonna go higher. He's been really good against Indiana this year and I expect a bounce back from his last horrible game. Next is Karis LeVert, six and a half assists, going higher, no Donovan Mitchell. And best of luck if you are tailing those picks. By the way, if you sign up with code AM Hoops, you get a free square, so you only have to take one of my picks. It's a Kevin Durant game next week. This is only for AM Hoops viewers. Check out this map to see if Underdog is available in your area. But once again, promo code AM Hoops, you'll double your deposit, get the free square, and it really helps out the channel. He overcame Magic's trash talk in 2019 as an all-star, led the underdog Brooklyn Nets to the playoffs, but lost his shot against Philly. D'Lo hit just 35% from the floor, just 3.6 assists, nearly half his regular season production. The Nets didn't compete because their best player didn't show up. But he was 22 years old and got a second chance in Minnesota. D'Lo struggled all series against Memphis with just 12 points on 33% shooting. But the killer was game six. At the most crucial point of the season, coach Chris Finch benched $30 million Russell for $2 million Jordan McLaughlin. It looked like D'Lo just doesn't translate to winning basketball. He's not that guy. But just when the world gave up on him, D'Lo surprised everyone. Last year, in his third playoff run, this time with the Lakers, he hit 12 of 17 shots to close out the two-seed Memphis Grizzlies. Dylan Brooks switched from guarding LeBron to trying to stop D'Lo. Then, 21 points to go up 2-1 over Golden State and 19 in the closeout game. Had enough confidence to call out his old team. I felt like I was held back in Minnesota, honestly, which is kind of like that runner who celebrates too early, gets passed up and loses. No, it is worse than that. It's like the runner who celebrates too early falls on his face and loses because the Denver Nuggets played D'Lo off the floor. It got so bad, Darvin Ham benched D'Lo and Bruce Brown called him out. Just making it tough on him on the defensive end, on the offensive end, just going at him. He's not the best defender, but he definitely tries. Oh, he tries, so cute. It's what I tell my two-year-old. Good job, buddy, nice try. D'Lo is not a threat to pressure the rim, so Denver forced him into these awkward contested jumpers. Uh, you can't miss shots and play bad defense. You have to do at least one or you get benched especially with Austin Reeves out there. He ain't exactly all defense either. So D'Lo is playing well again right now. Are we gonna fall for it? Why would the playoffs be different this time? Cause D'Lo has made experts look foolish. 
Dude was a star at Montverde Academy in high school. A huge program with guys like Joel Embiid or number one pick Ben Simmons. But D'Lo wasn't close to that hype. 18th ranked prospect in the country. No offers from Duke or Kansas or hometown Kentucky. So he went to Ohio State and thought, I'm gonna be here a while, two or three years to be NBA ready. Instead, he exploded. 19 points, six boards and five dimes, 41% from three, elite court vision and a ton of swag. His handles and passing made him a quote, can't miss prospect to NBA scouts. When D'Lo stopped listening to what the haters said and believed in himself, he became unstoppable. Can he do it again? A lot depends on who the Lakers face in the postseason. In round one against Memphis last year, LA had him on Dylan Brooks, who was a terrible shooter. Dude bricked wide open looks. Against Golden State, he guarded Klay Thompson, who was really streaky. I mean, eight of 11 from three one game, two of 12 the next. But you can't hide against Denver constantly putting him in high pick and roll, knowing his man's getting an open look. Then he gets caught ball watching and it's an easy cut. You need defensive awareness against Nikola Jokic. He will torch you. On offense, he turned the ball over, bricked contested shots, finally got his first bucket late in the second quarter. So Bruce Brown's like, oh yeah, takes it immediately to him. D'Lo defense, a traffic cone. So if he's not torching on offense, D'Lo is useless against an elite offensive team. That's why seeding matters. They'll probably face either the Thunder, Nuggets, or Wolves in the first round if LA gets out of the plan. But eventually, they are gonna face Denver and D'Lo's last chance to prove he is a winning player. Oh, but they wouldn't be in this position without D'Angelo Russell. Okay, but that's not good enough. You can't trip before the finish line. No contender will take D'Lo seriously, no matter how good he is in the regular season, including LA. Reports say the Lakers will look to upgrade for probably Trey Young. Trey is an all-star point guard, and with LeBron at 40, maybe they want the next franchise superstar. The real question, how much of an upgrade is Trey over D'Lo? Trey will make 43 million next year, Russell in the mid 20s. So Trey needs to be twice as good. Plus, D'Lo can be re-signed with bird rights. Trey is a trade for three first round picks and Austin Reeves at least. Is that worth it? We've had one look at Trey in the playoffs and he was awesome, but how much of that will translate? If the Sixers hadn't melted down, the Hawks were a second round exit. And how does Trey play as the third option in LA? Tons of offense runs through LeBron and AD. Trey will have to adapt. I think the Lakers are much better off trading for depth, shooting, and defense instead of another big star. It's already a winning formula around LeBron and AD. They'd be so much better off with multiple smaller deals. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon from Portland, Dorian Finney-Smith from Brooklyn, maybe the return of the bald Mamba. The Lakers are the nine seed with a healthy LeBron and AD this year. Something is terribly wrong and Trey Young ain't gonna fix that. But if LA does one thing, it is trade for stars. Or maybe they will keep D'Lo after he proves all his haters wrong. We'll see. One guy who will be on the trade block is Josh Giddy. The Thunder already tried to deal him at the trade deadline, but got Gordon Hayward instead. We know about the allegations against Giddy, but now the situation has gotten a lot worse. 